Hi, my name is Ming Yao, and this is a demonstration of solder joint fatigue simulation using ANSYS Mechanical. The method we're using will be based on the Darvaux method. So if you're interested in more details about the theory and the practice behind the method, please refer to Dr. Robert Darvaux's paper as well, or you can talk to one of the ANSYS representatives. The Darvaux method specifically is used to model, the, the, to simulate the thermocycling of packages. Uh, and it has a specific, very specific treatment to the geometry. So I'll go through the workflow of setting up these models uh, in this presentation. We have a package here with the PCB on the bottom. We have some solder balls as well as a substrate on top. So to start off with, this model is symmetric. So we'll start with a, by creating a quarter symmetric region in order to speed up the simulation. I'm going to create a cut plane based on this geometry. I'm going to split the body. Cut plane and remove the excess material. Uh, then I'll turn this plane around by 90 degrees and do it all over again. So this is, will be my simulation geometry. I don't need to do anything. Oftentimes, this, uh, this solder ball is removed. The corner solder ball typically experiences a maximum amount of stress, so it tends to fail very often. So I'm going to delete that and look at these two solder balls as potential failure areas. Cracks in, during a solder joint reliability testing or simulation typically occurs at the edges, at the interface between the solder and the CB or the solder and the substrate. Uh, in order to, to correlate this to experiment, what we need to do is separate out the area of crack initiation and crack propagation from the rest of the solder ball. So we're going to cut out uh, one thousandth of an inch from uh, the solder ball. Switching to imperial units, and we're going to this in the direction by a thousandth of an inch. Similarly, this one will be by a thousandth of an inch. And let's uh, hide these two and do some slicing. We want to again split the body. We split all of these bodies using both that plane as well as this bottom. So you can see that the solder balls have been properly sectioned off. And now we can begin our analysis. Save this. Going to the workbench screen, there's an option to share topology. So we're going to do a share topology, and NSS automatically finds all the faces where share topology will occur. Share topology in NSS space claim request that ANSYS creates a conformal mesh where these interfaces are. That's what we want because having a conformal mesh results in much more accurate stress uh, deformation results in the interface location. So we can go ahead and go to ANSYS 18.1 and begin our simulation. A solder joint reliability analysis begins with a static structural simulation. It requires some specialized post-processing. ANSYS has an ACT extension for that process, for post-processing of specifically this type of problem. So I'm going to enable my extension, uh, solder joint fatigue. This can be downloaded from the App Store for ANSYS. So this has the option to do some additional post-processing for the results and makes the simulation much simpler. We do want to start from the beginning though. Here, I'm going to open up engineering data and import my solder joint reliability uh, library, material library. So as you can see, for the solder here, we're using the Anand viscoplasticity model. The viscoplasticity, viscoplasticity model includes permanent deformation as well as time-dependent creep. Uh, 
all in, in a single model. It has a large number of coefficients, which means that typically you'd want to find the appropriate model from literature because identifying all of these coefficients would take a significant amount of testing. Luckily for most solder solders available, this type of information has been gathered and uh, it's readily available. So let's go back and begin setting up my simulation. Uh, this part here will be the substrate. So I'll go to this body and switch it to the substrate. This part will be the PCB. Same thing. Okay, now we're going to mesh this model. So ANSYS has many different meshing methods. In particular, this model requires the user to mesh the cut areas, the areas where cracks could occur with multiple layers of thickness. So what we'll do is select those areas specifically. I will use a multi-zone method because the multi-zone method have a sweep element size control here. So let's, just size. let's try it on one of these areas. I'm gonna make it a little bit too small to see what the mesh looks like. So three layers through the thickness. The base element size is a little bit large, so I can modify that as well. I'm going to put a body sizing of a tenth of a millimeter. The circle on my cursor represents the size of the solid mesh. Let's go ahead and generate a mesh for this. That's the mesh that's been created. Oh, notice the, the middle part should have a X mesh as well. So I'll insert another method. And I'll drag a box on the left. 90 bodies. Let's start with a blank sheet here and generate the mesh for the whole assembly. Okay, the mesh has been completed. We still have some Okay, much better. So this is the mesh we have. You can see the, the mesh is a little, bit, a little bit coarse on the substrate as well as the PCB. So let's select those areas and we'll find the mesh here as well. Curvature will give us a smoother growth rate at 1.85 times mesh based on this. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. We have good quality of elements transitioning from our solder region to both. PCB as well as a substrate. Once we have that completed, we'll go ahead and set up the rest of the model. So we we'll want to set up the boundaries as well as the loads. In terms of boundary condition, I will have symmetry planes defined on this surface and holding down the control key to select all of the surfaces. 
For symmetry, I'll just add in a friction of support. Select one node here. And assign a friction support at this particular node so we don't have any translational motion. Finally, we'll, we're going to put in thermal So this will be a multi-step analysis. I would like to run the simulation for a total of 15 steps. Each step will involve a change in temperature. The final time will be 7,500 and this will be a 15 step simulation. copy and paste this in there. So we have uh, a steady temperature ramp, followed by a hold, followed by a ramp down, etc. So in my temperature conditions here, I can se select my temperature, my accelerated testing profile. Starting at minus 30 degrees, we're going to ramp up to 125 degrees. Hold steady, drop it down. And we repeat this thermal cycling process three cycles. The next step is let's take a look at some of the results. We want to take a look at the deflection of the model. There's a factor called the nonlinear plastic work at the solder joint. That'll allow us to estimate the crack growth rate or whether cracks will grow at the interface between the solder as well as other materials. And finally, we can put in, use our solder joint fatigue tool to give us a calculation of the volume average value. So cracks will tend to grow based on the volume average nonlinear plastic work in this area. That's what this, this, uh, this ECT extension does. It, performs volume cap, volume averaging of a value, and then it also allows you to do some fatigue cycle counting. So the fatigue cycle counting, in my opinion, is of less importance. We'll put it in some basic values anyways. These values are calculated based on experimental data, so you need to have plenty of experimental data to predict when solder joint fatigue will happen by correlating experiment to simulation generated nonlinear plastic work. So as with all fatigue calculations, uh, anytime when you want to try to estimate cycles of failure, it's very much a correlation between simulation and experiment. So that's one. We'll duplicate this. Let's take a look at the other one over here. And from that, with that, we can begin the analysis. So there are, there are a couple things I forgot in set up this model. First is that our simulation is in fact non-linear because we have a solder joint simulation. So we want to change the large deflection settings to on. Secondly, we need enough resolution with each step in order to capture the changes in the material. So to that extent, we want to start with probably 10 steps and have a minimum of 10 steps per step within each um, step, low step. I want to set my maximum step to some high value in order to make sure I get a good result. So let's go ahead and start the simulation again. Okay, the simulation has ended. This is a nonlinear analysis with a fairly complex material model, so it does take some time. Once it's completed, we can take a look at our solder joint fatigue calculations. We have our plastic work differences here, estimates for cycles to crack initiation as rate of set crack propagation and number of cycles to failure. These are calculations directly from Darvo's uh, solder joint reliability model. The 
uh, class of work difference we can see from cycle number three to cycle number two and two to one is very similar, which means we have quickly stabilized on a reasonable result. Similarly, for other, other set of solders, the results are, are uh, I, almost identical because it is, again, a symmetric model. It's actually one eighth symmetric in this particular simulation. We can also look at the deformation. If we exaggerate the deformation a little bit, we can visualize it down the animation. So this exaggerated deformation allows you to see the strain building up on the solder balls. Uh, we can also visualize the user-defined results, which is our nonlinear plastic work. I'll hide the top surface so we can take a look at the ending results, you can see that the maximum plastic work occurs on the solder joints where the crack location is occurring. This is permanent deformation. And this is what we use in a volume average sense to, take in, to calculate the solder joint reliability. The value here, the plastic work difference is the, is, has been correlated to solder joint reliability under thermal cycling. So this value can be compared with uh, based on experimental data gathered in 50 experiments to correlate to the rest of the data here. Again, if you need additional details, you're welcome to read over Dr. Darbo's papers, and you're also welcome to talk to any of the site answers for more details. Now, this wraps up this particular pres presentation. Thank you for your attention. Have a good day.